Welcome back to our YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen, kindly subscribe to our channel. Ladies and gentlemen, can someone educate our Deputy President Rigadi Shagwa, the truthful man, that you need to look at the kind of battle that you want to engage in. As a Deputy President, he has got bigger fishes to fry. You should not be engrossed and being disturbed, getting sleepless nights about succession politics, which is four years ahead of us. We don't know what will happen in the next three years. Or you don't even know what is going to happen in the next day. And let Rigidi Geshegwa also understand that you don't have to use the same means to achieve all your political ambitions. The idea of arresting Mount Kenya youths was not the best way to solve his political ambitions or problems, if you call them. And let me ask you, do you think he achieved what he wanted? Because he wanted to intimidate and to sell fear to the youths. Remember, these are the same youths who are being called hustlers. They were promised heaven. Today, even hell is not falling on them. And so they, they kind of wake up to ask questions. Where are the jobs? Why is the cost of living so high compared to where Uhuru was or compared to where Uhuru left it? And apparently when these youths were arrested, they were placed in a squalid condition because the lawyer, the lawyer was explaining their lawyer. They are over 300 and they are bundled in a room that does not suffice to hold more than 300 people. It is almost raining. They have not eaten, not even a glass of water. They have not tasted. And then the mandatory 24 hours that someone should not exceed in a police cell was being infringed on. And when the lawyer insisted, they were now taken to some open air kind of court. What is trending that has caught people's attention was the kind of songs. They suddenly jumped into songs, anti-Ruto songs, castigating Rigadi Geshagwa and praising Uhuru Kenyatta and Maina Njenga. Listen to this song. This song is very significant because the youths are saying that before they were arrested, they were being asked, what is your name? And when your name connotes a kikuyu, then you're being arrested. It reminds me of the predicaments that many Kenyans have gone through where whenever you go for an interview and they realize that you are Otieno, or Wanyama, or Ondieki. When you're not in government, or your people are not in government, then trust me, you'll never get a government job. People have always cried for. So today, it has, the hand of the clock has been turned. And it is they that are suffering from their names. When these people were electing William Ruto and Gedi Shagwa, they were voting against Raila and Uhuru Kenyatta. Did they ever imagine that a time would come when the name Njoroge and Kamau would send you to jail? Did they ever imagine? When people were being chased, beaten and killed during the demonstrations 
the Kenya 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 during Azimio demonstrations, did they ever think that a time would come when they would be facing the police just because of their names? Sometimes time flies so fast. And exactly this is the reason why they were complaining and chanting anti Ruta songs. But why is it important? Why is this song a cause for worry to William Samoy Ruto? I have seen people sing during liberations and my favorite has always been the We Shall Overcome during the I Have a Dream speech by the Reverend, late Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. Before he delivered that speech, people were singing, We Shall Overcome. And many a times you have seen, even during demonstrations, even when, when workers go on strike, they will sing, Solidarity Forever. So, songs have always been used when people are looking for liberation. And so, when they develop this song, it is a cause for worry because songs are meant for solidarity. These people were getting more united in suffering. When people sing anti Ruto songs, they these are songs of solidarity. They are together in this in this and they are reminding themselves that it is Rigadi Geshagwa who is dealing with this for us. We are united in this and they get determined. It is a self determination that we are not going to look back because Rigadi Geshagwa has been exposed. It gets worse when someone is arresting you and you are innocent. That is how people get endocrinated. When you are arrested and you've not done anything, then you decide, then let me become a mungiki. If I can be arrested and I'm suffering with people whom I don't even know, then let me become one. That is how people get radicalized. And if Rigadi is not very careful, they are going to radicalize the Mount Kenya youths. Those who have suffered innocently will say, Afadali ni umie na mimi ni mwana mungiki wa ukweli. I don't know whether mungiki exists, but I'm just saying that when you persecute someone for something they, adopt, they have not done, then they, even, they would wish they had done it. Songs are also used to sell hope. And so when these people chant anti Ruto songs, they believe there is light at the end of the tunnel. And then when they are removed, they will not unite around Rigadi, they will not unite around William Samuel Ruto. And Rigadi seems to have, to have a, a determined mind that these people must be intimidated for them to follow Gashagwa. Remember when these youths were being told they were hustlers, they had been told that their main problem was the dynasty. Today, it has switched. It is not the dynasty that is their problem, but the rich. They are being told that the rich is denying them an opportunity to get jobs through the housing levy and all this. But they, are, they can see the kind of fallacy that is going on. Songs are also used to express frustration. When people sing, sometimes in jubilation, sometimes very sad, they express that they are frustrated, they are angry about someone, and in this sense they are very angry about Rigedi Gishagwa. And they were doing it in cell, in a police cell, meaning that there are other people who just joined them, they were leading with this kind of choir. Rigedi Gishagwa must understand that we are in a 20, is it 21st century, and it should not be dealing with people as if we are in the Moi era. Because during the Moi era, Kainu kilikuwa chama cha baba na mama. Nilikuwa na wana wakikimbiza, watu wanakimbiza, kuku, pale mashinani, katika sehemu za, uh, za mashambani pale. They would just decide that maybe I would have to they do that. But people are a bit enlightened. The level of democracy has at least improved. People fought for the democratic space. We should not be in this century and we are thinking backward. People should be thinking ahead. We should be moving, moving with the time. But we should not allow our profession in the past to determine how we want to deal with the youths of today. Menanjang explains very well 
that these people are simply asking for the cost of living to come down. They are asking for the jobs that they were promised. They are asking questions about a government that they voted in. And there seems to be a disconnect between Rigathi and William Samoyedro. Because William is not so much, you know, as always, William wants Rigathi Gashagwa, Ndindi Nyoro, and Kimani Chunga to push for it. So that he's, he's seen to be someone who is, uh, you know, innocent in this. Anawaweka wawe ndiyo waonekane. So that by the time he will even go back there, people will not see him as the man who was behind all this arrest, but people will be looking at their own sons. They will say that it is Rigeti Gashagwa. Yet I'm sure William Ruto is using behind the, you know, acting behind the curtains to ensure that this is realized. And so ladies and gentlemen, there is cause for fear. A revolt will soon come because everyone is getting tired. But it's even more serious when you're being persecuted and you've not done anything. I can assure you that those, those youths who are arrested are now anti Rigadi Gashagwa. Even if there are a few who still swore their allegiance to Rigadi Gashagwa, they have ditched him. People cannot collectively be named Mungiki just because they no longer sing to the tune an outlawed sect and there is no any proof just because your name is belongs to a kikuyu do you want to tell me that the, the, it, it's wrong to be a kikuyu youth during the campaigns it was the best thing to be a kikuyu youth today it is the worst thing and the government that they chose has now turned against them and this is very bad the people who are supposed to speak on their behalf are now talking against their behalf and this is very very sad I, I pray that we don't even get an inch further about what is happening. Kenyans need to have a national dialogue so that people can start afresh. Otherwise, we are sitting on a time bomb and very soon it will backfire, it will explode and it will be too late for us.